Today, we're going to tackle the game of tic-tac-toe. If you follow the strategies of this video, you'll never lose another game. But before we get to strategy, I want to share a question that I often share with my math students. Which side will win in this game of tic-tac-toe, assuming that both players make their best possible moves from here on out? Pause the video and see if you can determine the outcome. The first thing to notice is that it must be O's turn, because X has already made two moves and O has only claimed one square. O must play in the bottom left square in order to stop X from winning. X in turn now must play in the bottom right square to stop O from winning. Now, however, O is in trouble. X has two ways to win, a double threat. X will win this game. Notice that there was no strategy in this particular game. All of the long-term planning was over by the time we saw the problem. All that was left was to make the obvious choices to save the game. So what is the best strategy? It's a fairly simple game, and it has been fully solved, yet it has just enough complications to it that it can offer a challenge. Tic-tac-toe will end in a draw if both players play their best moves. The XKCD comic once provided a strategy guide for all possible positions to show the best moves. It's probably not the most useful form of a tip sheet, though, if you're just after some basic strategy. And there definitely are some strategies in tic-tac-toe that are worth knowing. Today we're going to learn how to maximize our chances of winning. We won't cover every possibility that could occur in the game. However, we want to learn enough so that we can reach the phase of the game where all the long-term planning is done and the outcome is determined, like the game at the beginning of this video. Note that the first player is playing for a win, but the second player is only playing for a draw. The second player has to play defensively and will only win if the first player isn't paying attention. Whenever you play tic-tac-toe, remember the following guiding principles. Always block the opponent if they might win on the next turn, and try to create a double threat with each turn, or stop your opponent from creating a double threat. We'll focus on the strategy from the perspective of player one who is using X's. We'll first consider the case where X chooses the center square. The game should end in a draw if O claims a corner square, but Team X should win if O claims an edge. To win, when O claims an edge square, Team X can play in the corner. Then O is forced to block, after which X can create a double threat. O had already lost the game after its first move. Alternatively, X could have played in the far corner, O would still be forced to block, then, once again, X can create a double threat with a guaranteed win. There might be multiple ways to victory, but I'm just going to highlight one from now on. If O chooses a corner square, then it's still possible for X to win. To maximize their chances of winning, X should choose the opposite corner to play in. Then, if O claims an edge, X will win by creating a double threat. Or if X claims a different edge, X will still win by creating a double threat. However, if O claims a corner square, then the game will end in a draw, because X must defend against O's threat. The next scenario to consider is if X claims an edge on the first move. The game should end in a draw if O claims a square on the same row or column as X, but X should win if O chooses a square that's not on the same row or column as X. So once again, half of the possible first moves for O lead to a draw and half lead to a loss. One way for X to win when O has claimed a nearby edge is to claim the shared corner. Then O is forced to play in the corner to stop X from winning but at this stage, X can claim the center and create a double threat, winning the game. To win, when O chooses the far corner, X should play in the corner square that is adjacent to X and in the same row or column as O. Once again, O must choose a corner square to block X, and then X creates a double threat for the win. If O plays in the same row or column as X, the game should end in a draw. There are so many cases to consider here, that we're going to skip them in this video, otherwise it would be twice as long. Consider it a challenge to show that all three of these games would end in a draw. When X starts with an edge square, there are so many ways to mess up and lose the game that I strongly recommend against claiming an edge for the first move, though it's still an interesting case to consider. The last position to consider is if X claims the corner for their first move. In this case, the game will end in a draw with best play if O claims the center. But if O doesn't claim the center, X should win. There are so many ways for X to win with this strategy that a corner move might be the best possible first move. The winning strategy is the same no matter which non-center square O chooses. Create an immediate threat by claiming the closest unblocked corner, 
Then, after O parries the threat, create a double threat that can't be stopped. There will always be a double threat that you can create. Here, O picks the near corner. X responds by choosing the closest available corner, O parries the threat, and then X creates a double threat, winning the game. If O starts with the far edge, the same procedure applies. X chooses the closest available corner, O parries the threat, X creates a double threat, game over. Finally, if O chooses the far corner, X can choose the closest corner, O blocks, X then creates a double threat and wins the game. Even if O claims the center for its first move, there's still a chance that X might win. X should claim the far corner. Then, if O claims another corner, X will win by creating a double threat. However, if O claims one of the edges, then the game will end in a draw because both players will spend their turns blocking each other. In summary, you should probably start the game by claiming a corner square. If the opponent knows how to stop that trick, then start with the center. Only start with an edge square if you want to live dangerously. Take your time and have fun. Let's end this video with a challenge problem. Which side will win this game of tic-tac-toe? Write your answer in the comments. Science Mom made a foldable book to go along with this video that details the key strategies. Print it out and add it to your library of foldable Science Mom books. The link is in the description.